What's up, y'all? We're gonna talk about five ways to flirt with someone that you like. So flirting is one of my favorite things to do in the world. Basically, it's adult play. Two adults having fun with each other, okay? You're saying words back and forth, you're smiling, you're having a good time. Basically, you're showing interest but not being too serious about it. So one of the ways that you can use this is to see if somebody's interested in you, see if they're willing to play back. A lot of people, if you do this right, should be having a great time. And also, what you can do to use flirting is you can make somebody, if you do it right, and you have good game as we like to call it, then if you flirt with somebody in the right way, you can actually make them more attracted to you, okay? Or you can unleash the, the, the inner attractiveness with, within that person. Okay, so I'm gonna give you five ways that I like to do this, and if you use these correctly, then you're gonna be having a lot more success in your next flirtatious encounter, all right? So we're gonna get into the first one right now. The first one is going to be deliberate misinterpretations. This is one of my favorite ones. So I'll give you an example. So if I'm hanging out with my girl or something like that, and maybe I'm getting a little too full of myself, she's gonna say something that's probably gonna try and tear me down, like tease me a little bit, okay? She'll say something like, you know what? You're too skinny to be acting this arrogant. All right, and I'll say, thank you. Basically, she wasn't saying it as a compliment, but I interpret it as a compliment. This is one of my favorite things to do. If you pull this off in the right way, it comes off as a little bit cocky, but a little bit funny as well too, and uh, everybody can have a good time with it. So, like, deliberate verse interpretations is one of my favorites. Number two is going to be playful assumptions. This is probably the one that I use the most. Playful assumptions is where you assume something about somebody, maybe you notice something about them, um, and then you're like pointing it out a little bit, okay? So, if I notice that that, um, what's that good way of putting it? One of my favorite ways of saying this is maybe they'll do something and I'll be like, oh, you would do that. <laughs> or you would say that. Do not make this something negative. Okay, this is where you have to assume the positive things about somebody. And sometimes they'll be like, well, why, why do you assume that? And then you wanna go into a, a, an explanation about it that's gonna lift them up rather than tear them down. Playful assumptions is great. Get good at noticing things about people, picking the positive things about that person, and then playfully pointing it out to them, okay? It sh shows you you're paying attention to them, it makes them feel important, but also makes them feel a little fun and uh, pokes a little fun at them, okay? Number three, number three is going to be nicknames. Nicknames is great. I like to pick nicknames that kind of embody the person, you know, whether they resemble a famous actor, a superhero, um, you know, just someone that you know. Um, I like to pick superheroes because I love superheroes. Uh, I read comics when I was a little kid, so, and now that superheroes are more popular, people can usually get my references. Before all the superhero stuff came out, like, nobody got my references because nobody watched superhero uh, movies or read the comics. So, uh, I really, really like that. Also, you can pick someone that's like, pick someone that might be unique or, maybe someone notices something about that person that you know you has never been called out before so i like to pick someone that's going to be positive like don't pick a nickname that's like Ursula from The Little Mermaid or something like that. Someone that somebody wouldn't like. Although Ursula does get hot briefly in that movie. But you know what I mean, okay? Don't pick something that's gonna be mean and tears them down. I would pick a nickname that's actually going to bring them up, okay? Maybe comparing them to like Scarlett Johansson, um, Supergirl, or um, I don't know, maybe an anime character. A lot of people love anime. So I like to give nicknames to people that I think is gonna really embody them. And if they give you a nickname back, now you guys have a little nickname thing going, that's actually a pretty cool thing. It's kinda of like you guys against the world, uh, kinda of like feel between, between the two of you. And that really helps if you're trying to like establish a connection with them. Uh, I think it's a really great way to flirt. Number four is gonna be cocky humor. Cocky humor is one of my favorite. You can especially pull this off if you're a guy, but honestly, you can pull this off if you're a woman as well too. Uh, guys like uh, women that are a little bit cocky as well in the right way, okay? If you're too cocky, then you become arrogant. People do not like people who are arrogant, but they like people who are a little bit playfully cocky. I'll give you an example. Um, my, you know, if I'm out with a girl that I'm seeing and she's having trouble opening uh, you know, a bottle or something like that. I might take it from her, open the bottle, and then just like flex a little bit <laughs> while I do it. <laughs> you know, and as soon as I do that, there's like little cocky humor, like, yes, of course, I was able to open it and she couldn't, but like, was it necessary for me to do that? Probably not. So that's one of the ones where she's gonna like roll her eyes too, but like everyone kind of giggles and has fun with it. So cocky humor is great if you know how to pull it off. Again, once you, if you do it too much though, you get into the arrogant realm. So make sure that you have a smile about yourself. Make sure that she knows that you're not being too serious. Number five is going to be playful arguments. Playful arguments are another thing that I think is really great for building energy between the two of you. So if you have a playful argument, a playful argument might be something like, you know, you're arguing about what's the best flavor of ice cream. 
Um, how bad did the eighth season of Game of Thrones suck? You know, things like that, things that don't really matter in life, but you can have some playful energy between the two of you. If you've noticed, when it comes to flirting, people like to tease each other. People like to, you know, give, poke the bear, so to speak, a little bit. And this allows you to kind of have that playful energy, that competitive energy between the two of you, which is really good for building sexual tension. However, if it gets too high up, sometimes you get the argument goes here, she goes there, you go there, you go there, you go there, it gets up too high, what you wanna do is bring it back down a little bit. For instance, if you start arguing about like cookies and cream is a better flavor than Rocky Road of ice cream, and you guys, and it, you, you can feel the temperature getting up to a pretty high level where you're like, okay, I'm not sure if we're flirting anymore, then you wanna bust that like a really positive compliment or like something affectionate. I'll usually say something like, oh my God, you're so awesome. Give me a hug. And then like you bring that energy back down to let her know that you still got love for her even though you were having that playful argument. Get, building up that energy and bringing it down to something positive is a really great way to flirt. And one of the biggest reasons why I notice guys aren't able to flirt is their energy. There's no playful energy and their energy tends to be very low and bland and boring. This can get that energy up by having a little bit of playful competition between the two of you. So playful arguments is great. Cool, well that's the five you guys. Again, the way to get better at flirting, I've said this before in my videos, is to practice. Honestly, I'll flirt with anybody, you know? I'll flirt with, uh I'll flirt with an old lady. I'll flirt with a, you know, my friend. I'll, I'll flirt with women I like. I flirt with everybody. I think it's fun. It's basically just playing between two adults. It's not that big of a deal. And if you practice, you're gonna get better at it. And when you do meet someone that you like, you're gonna be able to have that playful energy. So it's not just a normal, boring, like platonic conversation, which a lot of guys or even women can complain about. They want people, if you flirt in the right way, you're gonna make that other person smile and laugh. And that's really what it's all about. It's like having fun with that other person, bringing in that positivity in their life. So if you practice, you're gonna get better at doing that sort of stuff and you're gonna be a better dater. Cool, guys, well thanks for watching. Uh, those are all the tips that I have for today. If you want more, there's links in my description box below. You can sign up for my weekly mailing list where you're gonna get access to free trainings. You can take my mating intelligence quiz to see how high your mating intelligence is. And then also too, if you wanna reach out to me for coaching, I have a couple spots left. Well, uh, one left right now. And uh, yeah, just click the link in the description box below. We'll talk. Good luck out there, you guys.